welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle news, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, aka Beck, and as always, we love hearing from all of you. Comments, stories, ideas. Get a hold of us anytime. Call or text 305 900 Bend. Again, that is 305 900 2363, or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. Join alongside me, my producer, sound engineer, and co host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, he reminded me that it is still his birthday month because in our household, when you have a birthday, you get to celebrate the entire month. Power to the Pisces. (laughs) There you go. All right. Who else has sharing a birthday this month with Tigger is the one and only. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is awesome. Yeah, so we're changing gears a little bit, and I know some of you guys just sat up and you're like, yeah, we like Chuck Norris. Um, Duh. Like the greatest (laughs) ever. So, okay, so I have a little bit of information about Chuck Norris that I don't know if you knew this or not. Okay, so this is more than just like thinking about the shows he's been in, like Walker, Texas Ranger or- You know, okay. Exactly. Delta Force, and I mean, I was back in the 80s or something like that. But no, this is legitimate information about Chuck Norris. Let's get Chuck Norris-fied. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Did you know Chuck Norris doesn't read books? He stares them down until he gets the information that he wants. Oh, my gosh. Did you write that? Hold on. (laughs) Chuck Norris's tears cure cancer. Too bad he has never cried. I'm not done. (laughs) Chuck Norris does not sleep. He waits. (laughs) Chuck Norris can dribble a bowling ball. Oh, my God. No, I'm not done. (laughs) Once a cobra bit Chuck Norris's leg, after five days of excruciating pain, the cobra died. (laughs) Oh, my word. Chuck Norris once won a game of Connect Four in three moves. (laughs) These are so ridiculous. Oh, I'm not done yet. Uh, Chuck Norris can slam a revolving door. <laughs> oh, my God. You're... The dark is afraid of Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris has a diary. It's called the Guinness Book of World Records. Pretty... I'm, I got more. I can't believe you have hold all on, these. Hold on. Uh, the flu gets a Chuck Norris shot every year. I am literally like holding my forehead I got one right final now. One. I got one final one about Chuck Norris. When the boogeyman goes to sleep every night, he checks his closet for Chuck Norris. <laughs> oh, my Boom. God. Are Happy you... birthday month, Chuck Norris. All I could say is, so here's a serious question for you, Tigger, then. Growing up when you were a boy, yes. little boy, were you just an extreme Chuck Norris fan? I was, okay, I grew up in that era where... Like karate and the martial arts and ninjas started, you know, being on the scene. So Chuck Norris was all about the martial arts and all that. So, I mean, yes, I was a Chuck Norris fan. Okay. Now, what folks don't know, though, is you also, in later life, like in your 20s or 30s, you actually took up martial arts, I correct? I did. I did. I would love to do that again. I was a student of Taekwondo. I loved it. I absolutely loved Taekwondo. What I loved the drew workout. you to it? What made you love Taekwondo? I think it's because I tend to gravitate, I think, towards the individual type sports. You know, I love playing football in high school and all that, but I'm always drawn or was drawn to the sports where it's either your failure or your success. So, you know, like rodeo, I was nuts about that. For Well, still am my whole life. And I think it was just the fact that it was – it was you. It was either your success or your failure. Okay. And I just really, really, really liked that. And I really enjoyed Taekwondo. It was a great workout. I would love to get back into it. So you would recommend that youth, for example, it'd be a great thing for them to get involved in youth for confidence adults, building as anybody, well as adults? Any, I would say especially adults because it helped with your joints and your movement, your blood circulation. I mean, it gets you into shape. I was in an adult class. Well, I had to start with a youth. Because I was just starting out. But then the, I, I graduated into the adult class, and it was awesome. Still friends with these people to this day. I love hearing that because yep. I have heard from you know some of the women, too. They'll say, I need to take some of these self-defense classes and such. But maybe they don't want to take a true self-defense class. They want to get enrolled in something that they could go to every week. And Absolutely. Taekwondo, for example, would be a great because one. Because you stretch, and, and that's all good for you, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, because all of us need to work on our core and our backs. And it's a great uh, activity to do that. I guess I never even I thought taekwondo. of it. 
You and I, you might have to take me to a class. And I broke boards and all that stuff. You actually broke boards. Absolutely. Are you serious? Yes. I told you that that I fought in some tournaments and did speed breaking and all that. And I did not I know this. I was extremely intense. Everybody knows that I, I, I love to have a good time and I like to joke around and I'm kind of a prankster, but I was extremely intense when it came to Taekwondo and that's why my master, my instructor loved me in class because... I would never screw around. It was extremely serious. Okay, so... And I was very devoted. Having that mentality, we're just going to stay on this topic. I didn't yeah, plan on this, it. but yeah. now this has been a lot Let's of fun. What ages do you think would be okay to be in Taekwondo? So, for example, like some of us that are, you know, we're, we're not in our youth youth anymore. We're now middle-aged, or maybe we're even getting to senior level. Are, are we still okay to Absolutely. do Absolutely. The Taekwondo? wee ones, I mean, it's so cute watching the wee ones. That are They're like so cute. In three, four years old. and It's called a gi, Beck. Oh, and they just an kind of jump around. <laughs> and uh, all the way up to, honestly, there is no age limit of getting out and exercising and moving. I got to admit, you have my interest peaked because I've tried things like yoga. I have a lot of back problems, Tigger nose, a lot of neck problems, and I've tried those avenues. They have not worked for me, but that's because I get bored easily. I need something that I can kind of keep moving. So that there's you, a lot of activity. Yes. I, uh, you know that, okay, Beck and I were both very physically active people. We like to do all that kind of stuff. Taekwondo was one of the most physically demanding that I have ever done. But that's because I pushed myself to get to a certain level. Interesting. And uh, the instructors out there only take things at a speed that you are comfortable with. It's not that you got to go on your first day and break a brick. You don't, it's not something like that. You don't get to do that right out the gate? Not right out the gate. You got to learn the proper technique. Oh, man. So they take things only at your comfort level. Gotcha. Yoga is the same way. I mean, yoga instructors do that. But I'm like you. Yoga was just not my jam. I, I am very flexible, but I wasn't into yoga. I like getting out there, yeah, breaking stuff. Well, I think my other problem with yoga, too, is uh, the whole, oh, I've been a klutz my whole life, so standing on one foot just wasn't so working So your balance me. was a little tough. Yes. And so that was a little bit difficult for you. Yes, that's I always would, been. I would recommend the martial arts. We'll have to give it a try. But by the way, before we go to break, Tigger, do you think over break I can get you to go out to the shop and break a board for old time's sake? Absolutely. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. Bring a bunch of them. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, we already went down a road I didn't plan on, and we're going to go down another one you're not used to, and that is we are heading to our very own cabin kitchen. I'm going to create a meal for you to make for your family that is inexpensive and everyone will love. Is this Mexican meatloaf? Is that what we're making? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Stay with us, crew. We'll be back right after this. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Get ready for the Western experience of a lifetime. The world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale is back and better than ever. Join us May 16th through the 19th in Mile City, Montana. From the finest bucking stock to electrifying horse racing, this event has it all. Don't miss out on the kickoff concert featuring Josh Turner and special guest Chancey Williams. Mark your calendars and saddle up for the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale where the spirit of the West comes alive. Get your tickets at buckinghorsesale.com. You've waited, dreamt of a hunting adventure, and now have harvested that trophy of a lifetime. Keep the memory alive with a custom-designed mount preserved as a work of art. Check out our approved taxidermist. Depending on your location, the award-winning Schneider Taxidermy is located in Helena, Montana. When hunting the Dakotas, JB's Wildlife Designs in Mandan, North Dakota, then Shadron Creek Taxidermy in Nebraska, and for the Central USA, Little Rack Taxidermy in Macomb, Illinois. Reach out to The Ben Show and let us help you find the right taxidermist. (laughs) 
Welcome back to the Outdoors Radio Show, The Bend. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, and do I have a treat for all of you? I am taking you, well, maybe it isn't a treat because we're talking cooking, and either you like it, you love it, or you know what, you just wish it would be a little simpler. Well, that's what we are going to attempt to do today with all three of those concepts, and that is why we are heading into my very own cabin kitchen and we are going to make a mexican meatloaf but it's not going to be like your usual meatloaf we are aiming for a meatloaf that is portion friendly as we are all watching the waistlines you know we're getting ready for spring some of you are lucky enough to live in warmer temps where maybe you even have already donned your your shorts you put your swimsuit on but some of us live up in the north and it's been a lot colder a lot longer than expected and so we are scratching around trying to figure out what can we make that utilizes meats that are in our freezer as well as some of those goods that are in our cupboards and that's where i decided to make mexican meatloaf so i have my muffin tin out that's right we're gonna actually cook these little loaves, they're not gonna be little loaves this time, they're gonna be little muffins so that they're the right portion size to help us control ourselves. But then at the same time, again, we are utilizing all the good stuff that most likely may be in your cupboard already. So what I've done is I've unthawed one pound of beef hamburger. Now you could substitute venison for this recipe if you would like, but I've chosen to use ground beef. I have that unthawed. I have for the other ingredients, I have Worcester sauce. I have minced garlic. I prefer the raw version. I have two eggs half of a green pepper, half of a sweet onion, salsa, my favorite salsa, my favorite cheese dip cone salsa queso. So you might want to think of that. Salsa cone queso, I guess is what you might want to call it. Chili powder, cumin, and then a little bit of surprise. It's called awesome au jus mix and more of that in a bit. Now I do things a little differently. Well, first off though, I do have the oven preheated and that is at 400 degrees. Now back to what do I do that's a little bit different. After I've already cut up my green pepper, diced up my sweet onion, diced up some jalapenos. By the way, I do throw some jalapenos in it because Tigger likes a little bit of heat. He likes things a little hot. So I have uh, that already chopped up as well. Now I've taken my ground beef and I like to smooth it all out and then mix my ingredients in to the beef. I really massage it into it. For some reason, for me, I feel like it gets a better flavor. So here we go. I have it all spread out, as I said, and I am adding in, I've already shook on about a half a teaspoon of this stuff called awesome au jus. I know, it, I just called it stuff, but it's this, uh, it's this seasoning called awesome au jus, and you can find au jus mix pretty much anywhere. And it's kind of my secret to keeping burger tasting that meaty taste, that beefy taste, because sometimes if you notice when you cook it, it tends to lose that. So I put that on there just ever so lightly to bring out that beef flavor. And then I also tend to like Worcester because it helps you, not necessarily that you want it to taste like an actual burger, like a pub style burger you would order. I just want it to again, have a little bit of that beefy flavor to it, not get lost in all the other seasonings. So I've put that on there. Now I'm mixing in and tossing in my uh, minced garlic here. I'm getting it out of the dish because like I said, I like to use the raw. Sprinkle that over the top. I'm sprinkling over the top of that my chopped up diced sweet onion. And now I'm massaging all of this into the burger. Okay, now I'm gonna crack and add in two eggs on top of that and massage that really well into the burger too. Now that you've mixed all of those ingredients in really well into the burger, and I know some of you may have noticed I haven't added salt or even just black pepper. Now you can, if you know that you are somebody with a palate that really likes that really salty flavors. However, because we are trying to watch a little bit of our sodium intake, I would rather have you add the salt after the fact because what's gonna happen with this 
beef mixture, you will get that salt still in it. On top of it, when we added a little bit of that awesome au jus mix onto the beef, there's some salt in there too, by the way. So now I have my pan and I'm taking a couple of little spoonfuls of my favorite salsa and putting that at the bottom of my muffin tin. Now my muffin tin, I already did spray and grease the pan really well. And now I'm just, yep, there you go. I'm just putting little dabs of the salsa into each of the muffin containers because then I'm going to take about a tablespoon, a little bit more than that, of my meat mixture and place that now on the top of that thin layer of salsa that's on the bottom of that tin. Now that you have the bottom of that muffin pan each with a spoonful of the beef mixture, you're going to kind of make a little dip in it, okay? So it's kind of like a little cup, a little dip. And now you're gonna spoon in a teaspoon or a hefty teaspoon of that, your favorite cheese dip. I tend to use a salsa, a salsa con queso cheese dip, a little, you know, chips and salsa with the cheese never goes wrong. I always put that in the middle along with the green peppers. And then I take that diced up jalapeno pepper and just a little bit in the middle of that. And then you're going to cover the top of each one of those little cups you made with the remaining beef mixture. Now that you have that top layer of beef mixture on top of each one of those little cups in the muffin tin, you're ready to put a tablespoon or so of your favorite salsa back on the top of it. And then you're gonna place that in that preheated oven that you preheated to 400, but you're gonna turn the oven back down to 350 to bake it. Now it's usually a good rule of thumb is 35 to 40 minutes per pound of beef. If you're kind of wondering about how long to be, how long you should bake this. So it all depends on how many pounds you decided to make. So we're gonna to toss this in the oven here for like I said, about 35 to 40 minutes. We're gonna see how it goes. If you're a crew that really loves cheese, one more thing you can do to kind of jazz this meatloaf up is to sprinkle it with some of your favorite shredded cheese that you like for Mexican, like on your tacos, you could spritzel that on the top of it. But if you do do that, I warn you, make sure you cover that muffin tin with some aluminum foil. Otherwise your cheese will burn too fast. And you're going to want to leave that on there for the first 15 minutes of baking the meatloaf, meatloaf if you choose to put that shredded cheese on the top of it. All right, into the oven, it goes. All right, it has been 35 minutes and our meatloaf muffins, Mexican meatloaf muffins look about perfect. Okay, here we go. Oh, and look at this. It's like the dog smelt the food. Here comes Tigger I've already. Been I've been listening to you do all this, so I'm anxious to, to Well, what sample. do you think of you now you've seen them in the muffin size pan? Would you say that's not like the perfect portion? Oh, perfect serving size. Okay. But it's how many servings can one have is the question. Yeah, that's the okay. truth. That's the truth. Okay, let me guess. You're not even going to wait for these to cool, are you? No. You just want to try one? Yeah. Okay, let me dig one out. Yeah. Okay. Easy. You are, you're going to want to blow on this and cool it off, okay? Do not burn your tongue, all right? Okay. Don't burn your tongue. Okay, so just try it and just yes. sample this? Yes. Tell me, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> Okay, that's incredible. I don't know. If, I don't know if your listeners can hear this. This is really, really. You had no idea. What, what do you think about the? Uh, who would have thought of putting queso, that ch cheese salsa, in the middle? I know. Of your meatloaf. That is hot. Oof, I should have waited a little bit. <laughs> that is really, really. That is fantastic. Okay. Can awesome. you do like different? Because I, you put. Uh, Ground beef in there, right? Yes. So you could do, could you do something different, like chicken or something next? Time? You could ask, not that I don't love them. No, you could absolutely substitute this recipe, like I told you in the beginning of the show, with venison if you wanted to use up some of your deer meat. But yes, you could actually use. Say you wanted to go like think um, enchilada wise, you could instead yes use like a ground chicken meat oh my or ground gosh. turkey meat if you're really trying to could we lower your pull pork. You could, well, I don't know about pulled pork. It has to be ground. It has to be ground. It has okay. to be ground. It has I to be ground. That. But you can buy ground, of course, ground pork. You can buy ground turkey. You could do any of those alternatives. I'm going to have another one. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to call this one a success and get oh back to you from the studio as slow down there. We do not that. need you joking. 
Sorry about that. We were having some audio difficulties there. Again, that was a simple recipe for my Mexican meatloaf. If you'd like more details, just get a hold of me. When we come back, we head back to the field for more updates and stories. Stay where you are. More of The Bend after this. Hey guys and gals, this is John Arman with Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV travels the back roads to the backwaters in pursuit of the ultimate adventure in hunting and fishing. Join Team UOA every week for exciting action in the crosshairs of the outdoors. Catch Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV on YouTube, Amazon Prime, and make sure to follow Team UOA on Facebook and Instagram to share in the ultimate outdoor adventure. The hunt is planned, the guide is booked, the trip is blocked off in the calendar, but one huge detail remains, preserving that trophy, creating a memory that will last a lifetime. Little Rack Taxidermy has that fast, friendly service to fulfill your taxidermy in a timely, professional manner. Reach out to Heather with Little Rack Taxidermy through Facebook at Little Rack Taxidermy or send an email to heatherjoe23 at hotmail.com. Little Rack Taxidermy, bringing back the natural look. Shooting ducks, skinning bucks, I'm a hunting princess in a pickup truck. The 2024 world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sales starts with horse racing. Six days with Paramutual Wagering, May 4th and 5th on Derby Days, coinciding with the Kentucky Derby that'll be shown live in Mile City, Montana. Mother's Day is extra special, with moms free to the races and more races added May 17th through the 19th. The world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale, where the spirit of the West comes alive. For a full schedule and tickets, head online at buckinghorsesale.com. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck, and riding along shotgun, as always, is my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. The Black Scorpion. You are not Mr. Taekwondo over there. I can play Black Scorpion. All right, I got a recent story that I got to share with all of you. According to a recent Cash App Taxes survey, they revealed that 54% of Gen Z and 38% of Millennials report the stress of filing taxes has either brought them to tears in the past or they expect it will this year. Furthermore, one in four Gen Zers responding said they'll need help from a therapist to recover from the experience. We're talking about taxes again. What did did they think was going to (laughs) happen that they were... What, going to get a complimentary dessert with it or what? I know, that's kind it's of, taxes. that's what has, I'm bringing this up because that has me shocked on a whole nother like sociology level of how did you get through school, how many years to graduate, even just high school, and not realize the the implications of taxes? I think some of them had the assumption that they were going to get this really big monster return. Oh, that's, that's, that's what I'm assuming anyway. Yes, that's actually very true. They're all have this in their minds, a lot of folks thinking, and they're already have that, well, what do you want to call it? Refund already spent in their minds. And now they're finding out taxes and filing isn't really the way they thought it was supposed to be. And you and I do things differently, or in my opinion, the way that we should, we try to manage our finances that Come tax time, we don't pay any in, but we don't get a refund because the government isn't going to give you any interest on your money. Absolutely. We shoot for zero, zero if every we can do that. year. And that's how it's been for me ever since I was even in high school. I always shot for zero. And I don't know. We don't have kids, so we don't know what is taught these days as you go through those you know, upper levels before you graduate high school. Right, right. Are they still teaching accounting one and two? I had lots of accounting. So before I even graduate high school, but that I, was I just important. I class. You didn't? I don't think I did. For my folks on the farm and ranch, they were very, very, very staunch that we had to have accounting in high school. But my dad would sit down with me a lot and make me balance my checkbook because, okay. you know, like a lot of kids... At a very young age, you're trying to earn your own money, right? I mean, you might have some of your own cows or, you know, you've got a job after school or something like that. So my dad made me do that, of balance the checkbook and made me, you know, kind of understand that, okay, I made X amount of dollars. I got to pay taxes. And so he went through that with 
We're just bringing this up so that if you do know some youth or some individuals, young adults, and they're struggling with tax season, lend them a hand, show them the strings, because there are two things we know in life you can't get away from, and that is death and taxes. And that there was said by Mr. Benjamin Franklin. Benny said that? He did all those years ago. He knew how it was. We're going to call this show Wrapped, folks. Thank you to my producer, sound engineer, co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart, and now we know Taekwondo Man. (laughs) It's the Black Scorpion. Thank you very much. (laughs) Remember, crew, keep sending in those questions you might have. If you know of something spot-worthy, if you've got a recipe that you feel we need to try out in the cabin kitchen, as well as your area's field reports, that number again you can call or text anytime is 305-900-2363. One more time, that's 305-900-2363, or you can always email bendradioshow at gmail.com. Also, be sure to be following us on social media at The Bend Show. Missed part of this episode or want to hear past shows, you can find them all on the website, thebendshow.com. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and to The Bend Show YouTube channel. Looking to change things up this next year at your event, conference, or awards banquet, including rodeos? Have Tigger and Beck entertain your crowd. You got it. Tigger and I are both PRCA Pro Rodeo card holders. Let us be your announcer and music director. Thank you to our partners, the world famous Mile City Buck and Horse Sale, the Prairie Crocus, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Blue Water Girl Charters, Buckstorm, Little Rack Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, Atlas Tracks, RFD TV, and Wrangler. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners that came once along with us. Whether you're coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. And remember to keep up with me, Beck, all week long by following The Bend again on Facebook and on Instagram at The Bend Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch Beck if you can next week on The Bend. The Bend.